Your home is more than the sum of its parts. And creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you ever had the urge to peer through the windows of a strange house to see what transpires within? Have you ever wanted to open and read a letter not addressed to you? To intrude upon the confidences that do not concern you? Have you ever found yourself straining to catch the words that pass between two people you don't know and who don't know you? If you have, and I think there is no one who has not, Then you have felt the itch of the eavesdropper, which is to learn secretly that which is private. I reached out my hand and touched him. He felt cold. I whispered the question softly. Softly? Then without hesitation, I clapped my hands over my ears. I swung around, away from him. I looked straight ahead... And I rushed out. Our mystery drama, The Eavesdropper, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Hi. who eavesdrop never hear good of themselves. So goes the old adage. And like most old adages which have been handed down to us through the years, it contains its own kernel of truth. But what of another employment of eavesdropping? Employment to a specific purpose. One which predates the adage by many centuries. One which we propose to tell you about now. It's so hard to tell what's right from what's wrong. Don't you think so? Yeah. I've always found it very difficult. Maybe you don't have that trouble. Some people don't. Do you? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Now, my husband had no trouble at all. He always knows what's right. But, of course, Martin is very brilliant. Martin graduated in the top 10 percentile of his class. (laughs) I don't even know what percentile means, but I know it's very good. You know what it means? Uh, percent? Percentage? Yeah, something like that. Uh, very near the top, almost the best, something like that. Yeah, I think I'd like another drink. Sure about that? Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I'll go get it. What in the world am I doing here? Who is this man I'm talking to? How did I get here? What have I done? Okay. There you are. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, listen, am I bothering you? No, 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 not at all. Because if I am, you know, just say so. There's nobody else in the bar. It's still early. I don't know if it's right, a woman sitting at the bar all by herself. You think it's all right? They do it all the time these days. In other bars, too? All over. I only come to this bar, never any others, just this one. That's all? 
Yeah, because the name of this one is the Hermes. You like the name, huh? Well, it's not that I like it so much. Um... Listen, may I tell you something? It's kind of personal, but do you mind? What have I got better to do? <laughs> the reason I started coming here to the Hermes Bar and Grill is because of something my husband Martin said one night around dinner time. He was sitting in his big chair and I was sitting at the table. I just took a peek at the roast. It's almost done. Martin? Huh? The roast is almost done, I think. Huh. I cooked it a new way. Leg of lamb, southern style, it's called. Fascinating. <laughs> wow. I don't know if it's fascinating exactly, but it's interesting. You roast it just like a regular leg of lamb, but then half an hour before it's done, you start basting it. Fascinating. With the, this sauce, it has lemon and vinegar and ketchup in it. Absolutely fascinating. You mean the ketchup part? Is that is that what you mean? I thought it was peculiar myself. Myrtle. Don't you think? Oh. Yes, Martin. What is it? I am reading. Oh. Yes. Well. I'm sorry. If I have told you once, I've told you 500, a thousand times, don't bother me when I'm reading. I didn't realize that you... When were... you see me in this chair, under this lamp, with the light turned on and shining on a book which I am holding in my lap, when I am wearing my reading glasses... Sorry, I'm sorry. Don't you think you might deduce from all this circumstantial evidence that I am reading? I should have, yes. I should have. Well... Now go baste your roast or whatever it is you're doing out there. So, uh, how did the roast turn out? Oh, good. Very good. In fact, marvelous. You wouldn't think so, would you? But it was very good. I, I kid you not. I think I'd, uh, like another drink, if you don't mind. Well, no. I think I'm starting to feel better. <laughs> Don't get the feeling too good now. <laughs> nice man. Very nice man. I like him. I really like him. I mean, I can talk to him. He listens. I mean, he really listens. And what's more, he hears. He hears me. I think he really hears me. I like him a lot. Here's your drink. Oh. What's your name? Me? My name's Myrtle Chap, and what's yours? Uh, Charlie. Charles. Everybody calls me Charlie. Even my wife. Uh, Everybody named Charles gets to be called Charlie sooner or later. <laughs> it's in the cards. You married? Four kids. Four? Yeah. Uh, uh, take it easy with that drink. You don't mind a little advice? Yeah, well, I, I want to finish what I was telling you. About the leg of lamb? Mm, southern style. Uh, but, but it wasn't about that. It was about my husband, about... My interrupting him when he was reading. Now, that was so dumb of me. I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. He told me over and over, but it seemed like when he was home, he was always reading. Always. Sometimes I'd take the Reader's Digest, I'd read that, but... Anyway, when the leg of lamb was almost done... Fascinating. Martin? Coffee, tea, or milk? Martin? Hmm? Do you want coffee, tea, or milk with your dinner, and do you want it with it, or do you want it later? Do I want coffee, tea, or milk, and do I want it with or later? I need to know. I don't want any of them now, since I am reading this book. I meant that I... What I shall want later will depend upon how I feel later. Do you think you could wait until later to find out if I want coffee, tea, or milk? Is it a good book? Fascinating. Oh, what's it about? Greece. Greece? Ancient Greece. Oh, oh, you mean the country, Greece. The Greek civilization. Uh -huh. Its history, its mythology, its customs, its beliefs, everything. Well, maybe I ought to read it sometime. What is it that's fascinating? Well, for instance, the Oracle of Hermes. 
Hermes? An Olympian god, son of Zeus. Like the bar. What? Down the block, the Hermes Bar and Grill. I- I've never been inside of it, but it looks like a nice place. Uh, this is not about the Hermes Bar and Grill. It is about the Oracle of Hermes in Greece. There was a shrine there to the god Hermes, and when someone was depressed or in doubt, he would go to the shrine where there was a statue of Hermes. Is that so? Hey. Well, I don't know if the Hermes Bar... (laughs) Are you interested in what I'm trying to tell you? Are you completely immersed in the Hermes Bar and Grill? Well, both. I don't know. I I just thought... Where are you going? I'm going to make a phone call. But dinner's almost ready. Oh, dinner. How long? Till I'm off the phone. Could I have another drink, Charlie? I uh, think you've had enough, Mrs. Chapman. You call me Myrtle. You're not used to drinking, Myrtle. I knew that the first time he came in here. Yeah, but I'm getting used to it. Ah, well, that's my point. And I like it. That's just it. I don't like the taste of it. But I like what it does for me. That's what they all say. One more? Please? Just one. And, uh, that's all. It was wrong. Well, maybe not wrong exactly, but it was sneaky. Not nice at all. I was ashamed of it. I told myself I shouldn't be doing it, but I did it anyway. And I'm glad I did it. Because here I am in this nice bar and grill with this nice man, this Charlie. You really never know how things are going to turn out. Now, that's the last drink you're going to get out of me. Oh, thank you, Charlie. You're such a nice man. I don't know if I am or not. I'll bet your children are crazy about you. They're good kids. I was telling about how Martin went into the bedroom where the phone was. Oh, yeah. Well, now, I couldn't imagine who he'd be calling up at that hour with dinner practically on the table. Now, I never, never, I mean, since the day we got married, I never interfered with Martin in any way, shape, manner, or form. I mean, what he did was his business. It was my business to be his wife. Take care of his home, see he had clean clothes, sometimes, you know, take care of... How many children did you say you have? Uh, Four. Yeah. What are their names? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. I, I, w- I was wanting to tell you the terrible, sneaky thing I did. Now, I hope you won't think that it's awful. Oh, I doubt if I will. I eavesdropped. You what? I eavesdropped. See, I listened in on his conversation. I listened to what he was saying on the telephone. Do you think that's awful? What was he saying? Well, I only heard part of it, but it was... Well, like he said, it was fascinating. Fascinating, Karen. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, you've read the satires of Juvenal, of course. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you had. Remember the part about women's passion for having their fortunes told? How they'd run to an astrologer, anyone at all who'd interpret a dream... Well, of course you remember. Uh, I I forget you're almost as well read as I am. Well, I have a new one for you. It seems that in Farai there was a shrine to Hermes, and anyone who wanted an answer to a question, something troubling, perplexing, went to this shrine. There was a statue of Hermes there, and the troubled person, after making a donation, of course, to the shrine... Yes, a donation, what else? Uh, after that, he was permitted to ask a question of the god. Uh, whisper it into the ear of the statue. Uh, wait, 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 hold on a minute, I'm not through. Right after asking the question, the questioner would, quick like a rabbit, put his fingers in his ears. Yes, yes, stop up his ears so as not to hear anything. He'd keep his fingers in his ears till he left the shrine. Then, well, well, hold on. I'm about to tell you, Karen. Then he'd go about his business. Go home, wherever. But wait, wait, wait. I haven't given you the zinger. This is what makes it all so fascinating. On his way home, or wherever he was going, the very first thing he heard anybody say, anybody, anything, that was the answer to his question. How about that? <laughs> I had to tell it to somebody, Karen. I, I knew you'd love it. 
What inventiveness. What, what imagination. Yes. Yes. Well, thanks for listening to me. I, I have to hang up anyway. Uh, dinner on the table and all that. So long, Karen. See you tomorrow. That's what I heard him say. Now, maybe I haven't got it all quite right, but that was the sense of it. And the part about the god Hermes and how to ask the question, then put your hands over your ears tight, tight, and leave the bar. I, I, I mean the shrine. Then take your hands away and listen to the first thing you hear anybody say. No matter what they said, no matter who they were, that would be the answer to your question. I got that part right. I know I have. So, you see, Charlie, that's why I started coming here. It is? You do understand, don't you? I don't know if I do, Myrtle. Why, uh, why don't you let me bring you something to eat, huh? Like a sandwich? No, I don't, I don't a want A chicken anything. sandwich, a cup of coffee? No, How I does that sound, I don't huh? Want Come anything. on, you, you sit right there. You, you, you just sit right there. <sighs> next to the statue of Hermes, huh? <laughs> All right, that's it. You just put your little hand on his foot and uh, you sit right there while I tell the chef. Nice chicken sandwich, all white meat, okay? Okay. Just sit there. I'll be right back. Oh, Hermes. I hope I've done the right thing. It's so hard to tell sometimes. Have I done the right thing this time? There are so many questions. We spend our lives asking them. And no sooner is one answered than another arises. We go to our parents, we go to our teachers, we go to our priests, our rabbis, our ministers, and they do their best to give us answers, but the baffling truth is that while they are giving us answers, they are asking questions, too. I'll be back shortly. If our parents could not answer our questions, if our teachers could not, what really is wrong with going to a statue of Hermes, son of Zeus, and whispering in his ear, then stopping up our own ears with our hands and running away without waiting for an answer? Then, taking our hands from our ears, listening to the first overheard sentence uttered by anyone at all, and taking that for our answer. Makes as much sense to me as anything else. Ah, here's your sandwich and your coffee. I don't know if you take uh, cream or sugar, but I brought you both. Oh, thank you, Charlie. You're very nice. Oh, you be nice to me and eat it, okay? Hey, place is starting to fill up, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, I'm... Well, really get busy for a while, yeah. Hey, you trying to get rid of me? Oh, no. Because <laughs> I'm going to stand right here to eat that sandwich. That lady that sits at the table by the window, the table for two, does she come in every day? Uh, no, not every day. Some days. She got a friend she meets here sometimes. Yeah, she was meeting somebody the first time I came in here, she told me. Eat your sandwich, wouldn't you? You see, after I heard Martin tell this Karen person over the phone about the shrine of Hermes, I thought to myself, why shouldn't it work here? What's so special about Greece? Don't you agree? At least drink the coffee. So honey. I came here. Well, when I walked in, the place was almost full. There was room at the bar, but there wasn't a single solitary table that didn't have people sitting at it. I didn't know what to do because I'd never been in this kind of a place before. I mean, no offense intended, Charlie. I'm not taking my But way. I saw this woman sitting by herself at that table for two. And I walked over to her. Excuse me? Yes. Uh, I see you're sitting by yourself. Yes, but I'm... Um... Could I... Would you mind if I... Uh, I'm expecting a friend. Oh. Well. But, but she's a little late. Or I'm a little early. If you want to sit down till she gets here... It's... Oh, thank you. I, uh... I'm not used to bars. I hardly ever... <laughs> well, thank you. My friend shopping for furniture. She just got married. Oh, really? I'm married. I imagine she's staying in the stores till they all close. Uh, so hard picking out furniture. And my husband picked out ours. Really? You let him do that? Well, he's got wonderful taste, and I have trouble, you know, making up my mind about things. I never know what's right. He always knows. Oh, 
I see my friend. She just turned the corner and she's coming down the street. Um, look, I don't like to drive you away, oh, but... Oh, no, that's all right. Oh, why don't you sit at the bar? Could I do that? Why not? This is a very nice place. Nobody's going to think you're here to pick up a man. There's a stool empty down at the end, right next to the, the bronze statue. Take that, why don't you? Is that... Is that a statue of Hermes? The Greek god Hermes? Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, it is. Hermes, son of Zeus? They named the place after him. You're not eating. I will. I will. If you give me another drink. Not said to finish the sandwich. I wanted to finish telling you about that day I first came in here when I met that lady. She was the one that showed me the statue of Hermes, this one here. I don't know if you remember that day, Charlie. There I was sitting here, right here next to Hermes, and pretty soon I would ask him the question that was perplexing me. I remember you came over to me and you asked me what I wanted to drink. That's what bartenders do as a rule. Well, I didn't know what to order because I didn't know about things like that. And then you said... You remember what you said? You said, have a cream de menthe frap. And I said, all right. And you went off and you made it. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember because when I uh, came back, you weren't here. After I went to all that trouble. No, because while you were making the cream de menthe frap, do you know what I was doing, Charlie? Do you? What were you doing? I was standing up right here, like I am now, you see? You see how I can just reach Hermes' ear? Yeah. Well, I put my lips close to his ear, and I whispered into it. I whispered the question. Then I put my hands over my ears, and I ran out. But just as I got to the door, I took my hands away, and I heard that woman, I heard her say, just as plain... I I can hear it now. She said, if you don't like it, send it back. Just like that. If you don't like it, send it back. And that was the answer to my question. You see? Myrtle, what was the question? Oh, the question, the question was... Does my husband love me? Hey, Charlie. I've eaten all the coleslaw. Now, could I have another drink? Yeah. I think I'll have one myself. Finish that sandwich. I'll try. So you whispered the question into the ear of Hermes here, uh, his statue. Mm hmm. He asked him, uh, Does my husband love me? Mm hmm. Then you stopped up your ears and you hightailed it out of here, huh? Mm hmm. But just as you got to the door, you heard the lady at the table by the window say, If you don't like it, send it back. Is that right? Mm hmm. And, uh, that was supposed to be your answer, right? That was my answer, Charlie. Run that past me again. I might... I don't get it. Charlie, the gods don't answer people just yes or no. They don't make it that easy. But the answer is there. You just have to find it. Oh, you... uh, Did you find it, the answer? Not right away. The gods don't want you to find it right away. They want you to think about it. So after I left here, I went for a long walk to think how could if you don't like it send it back how could that be an answer to does my husband love me yeah how could it now the first thing I thought was I mean you know this is silly I mean she's just talking to her friend about the furniture she was buying for her new home her friend having just got married that sounds reasonable she was telling her if you don't like the furniture or some particular piece of furniture why send it back Back to the department store where you bought it, right? Right. Then I thought, it popped into my mind what my mother told me. Your mother? When I was a little girl, I said to my mother, I said, Mother, where Your home is more than the sum of its parts. And creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson.
did I come from? How did I get here? I mean, you know how little girls ask these questions. Boys, too. Well, my mother got all red in the face and flustered, and she said, Why, Myrtle, your father and I bought you at the department store. Well, of course, I know better now. I hope so. And I would never tell my little girl anything like that. <laughs> if I had a little girl. I hope not. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking when I was taking my walk. And I was remembering what happened a little while after I got married to Martin. What happened? I got pregnant. You're what? Pregnant. I'm pregnant. You're not. I'm going to have a baby, Martin. Oh, no, you're not. It's out of the question. But I am. What's wrong with that? We're married and I love you. You love me. We're, we're going to have a baby. What's wrong with that? Everything conceivable is wrong with that. I don't see what can be wrong about having a baby. I have my work. I have my studies. I, I can't have a child in the house. Why not? Interfering with everything. Disrupting everything. Messing up everything. It's out of the question. Absolutely out of the question. Why didn't you consult me about this before you went ahead and got yourself pregnant? I didn't get myself, Martin. Yes, you did. Deliberately. Well, get rid of it. Get rid of it? How can I get rid of it? It's here. Right here. Not yet. There's still time. You get rid of it. No, Martin. I couldn't do that. I couldn't possibly do that. All right, I'll arrange for it. There's someone I can call. I'll do it tomorrow. Someone you can call? A friend of mine. You sound like you were going to call up a department store or something. A good friend of mine. And have them come and pick up something you decided you didn't want, just like that. I don't want it. Take it back. But this is a baby, Martin. It's not... It's not a table or a chair. It's a baby. Well, after I'd walked around for a while, thinking about the answer, thinking about the question, really, thinking about both of them, I did the shopping for dinner, and then I went home. Martin was sitting in his big chair under the reading lamp. I was very quiet. I walked on my tiptoes to the kitchen. I peeled the potatoes and shelled the peas very quietly. I put salt and pepper on the chops. This was all very soothing, you know what I mean? I mean, fixing food, getting it ready, it's very good for my nerves. Always has been. So after everything was prepared for cooking, I went into the living room where Martin was. Martin? Huh? I want to have a baby now, Martin. What's that? We've been married eight years, and I think it's time to have it. Out of the question. I don't think it's out of the question at all. Well, it is. Just because you say so? Yes. Just because I say so. Please don't start reading your book again. The subject is closed. Just because you say it is? Yes. I see. Good. Martin? Oh, for heaven's sake. What? I'm going to... Going to what? Have a baby. And I'm not going to send this one back like the last time. Are you trying to tell me you're pregnant right now? Not yet, but I'm planning to get pregnant, and this time... You'll do no such thing. Oh, yes, I will. I'm a woman, I'm your wife, and we can afford it, and I'm going to get pregnant and have it. You can have your work and your books, and I'll have my baby. No, you won't. Yes, I will. I've made up my mind. You won't. You won't because I won't give you the chance to. Do you understand? I won't come near you. I won't touch you. I won't have anything to do with you if that's what it takes to keep you from having a child. Do you understand that? Well, do you? I'm going to start dinner. What, uh, what did you do? I went out to the kitchen and started dinner. You didn't say anything? That's when I began coming in here regularly. I thought Hermes could help me, and in a way, he did. He gave me the answer, in a way. I asked him if my husband loved me, and I found out he didn't. 
son of a gun. But that just left me with another question. What was that? Do I love my husband? Life can be seen, if you so choose, as one question after another. Just as we find an answer, another question arises. Or, and this is enough to take the heart out of anyone, the answer we find turns out to be inadequate. The solution we arrive at, no solution at all. I really think it remarkable that we make our way through life. The best that can be said for us is that we keep trying. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. The thing that interests me about the Oracle of Hermes is the stipulation that the questioner should not listen for the answer. Should, in fact, go to great pains to avoid hearing it. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? How many answers lie ready at hand if only we would take our fingers from our ears and listen? Oh, how could you love a man like that, Myrtle? You're entitled to have a kid. Every woman's entitled if she wants to. That's true, isn't it? Don Rice. Charlie, give me another drink, huh? No, no, you had enough. Please? You just finished telling me what happened, and maybe I'll get you another drink. Maybe. Well, as soon as I knew what the question was, I thought right away, I know what I'll do. I'll come here to the Hermes Bar and Grill and ask the statue the way I had before. And I started out the door to come here, but then I heard Martin on the telephone in the bedroom, and I... I eavesdropped the way I had before. And I heard him, and he was talking to her. To who? To Karen, the same woman he'd called the other time to tell her about the Oracle of Hermes, because I was too stupid to understand. Oh, come on, you're not stupid. Wait, wait, he was telling this Karen how he had to see her that night, the next day, as soon as possible. Well, I was so hurt. Oh, sure. I was jealous, is what I mean. I mean, I was really jealous. But then I thought, if I'm jealous, I must love him. I mean, why would I be jealous if I didn't love him? But I couldn't be sure. Oh, Charlie, can I have another drink now? No, no, no. F finish what you're telling me, huh? So it was very important that I come here and ask Hermes. And I did. I just left the dinner stuff in the kitchen and I came over here. I remember that same woman was sitting at that table by the window. Oh, she's there now. Yeah, it came in a minute ago. Yeah. Guess she's waiting for her friend. Oh, I guess so. Go on with what you were saying, huh? I remember she spoke to me when I came in. Hello there. Oh, hello. You want to sit down for a minute? Oh, no, I have to sit at the bar. I have to sit at the end of the bar. Have to? I have to sit on the stool at the end of the bar next to the statue of Hermes. Really? Is it so important uh, where you sit? Well, I have to ask Hermes a question. <laughs> you mean that? It's something that's troubling me. And you think Hermes will give you the answer? Not right away. Uh, well, when? Well, that's hard to say. You see, after I've asked the question, I won't listen for the answer. Why ever not? Well, that's the whole point. I don't listen for the answer. I put my hands over my ears and I leave. And then the first thing I hear after I've left, that's my answer. That's uh, very interesting. Yeah. Well, I'd better get on over to the bar before somebody takes the stool next to the statue. And uh, that's what you did, huh? Yeah. I came over here and I... I sat on this very stool right here. Oh, well, I don't suppose you remember. Oh, I can't say that I do. Well, I? I sat here. I think I ordered a drink, but I don't really remember. Anyway, I stood up 
tall and I put my lips next to the ear of Hermes and I said, Do I love my husband, Hermes? And I stuck my fingers in my ears and I ran for the door. And just before the door closed behind me, I heard, Don't be stupid. If you hate it, get rid of it. Don't be stupid. If you hate it, get rid of it. That's what I heard. That was the answer. Some answer. Well, that's how I felt at first, but I just let it sort of sink into my mind. I was positive that sooner or later, I would know the real, true answer. Well, did you? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. It wasn't quite what I expected. What was it? Well, uh, see, first I have to tell you what happened before the answer came to me. I was just fussing around the kitchen, getting dinner, making something fancy, because, well, cooking is good for my nerves, I really, I told you that. Yeah, 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 go on. And Martin came into the kitchen. What are you cooking? What? Oh, I thought you were reading. I was. I didn't want to disturb you. Was I making too much noise? What is that you're cooking? Chicken Marengo. Oh, new, huh? New recipe. Well, what's in it? Are you really interested? Well, sure, why not? Well, uh, you see here, I've already fried the chicken. It's in the oven now to keep it warm. Yeah. You really want to know? Sure I do. Okay. Now, in uh, this pan where I fried the chicken, I'm making a sauce, see? There are two tablespoons of flour, two of butter, and a cup of soup stock. Uh, next, I'm going to add some sliced mushrooms, some uh, tomatoes all cut up, some sliced green olives, and a little white wine. And then I let the whole thing simmer for, uh, oh, maybe ten minutes. Mm, swell. Great. Then, I'll take the chicken out of the oven and put it on a, a big platter, this one, you see? Yeah? And then I'll pour everything in the pan over the chicken. I mean, that's why it has to be a big platter, you see? Yeah. And then I put chow mein noodles in the center of the big platter. And I sprinkle some cooked peas over the whole thing and a whole lot of browned almonds. And, Martin, I was telling you... Where did you go? I was telling you how I... Martin? He'd split, huh? Walked right out on me, smack in the middle of me telling him about chicken Marengo. When I'd gone to all that trouble, he just walked out. Didn't say anything, just walked out of the kitchen and went back to the living room and picked up his book and started reading. You, uh, what did you do? Why, I finished the chicken Marengo. The mushrooms and olives and the tomatoes and chow mein noodles and the peas and the almonds. I must say that platter looked something gorgeous when I got through with it. Oh, I'll bet. I was very proud of it. I'm oh, sure you were. I mean, all that trouble I went to. Sure. So I thought to myself, I'll show it to Martin. He'll be pleased. Yeah. Well, he wasn't pleased. No? I don't know why I thought he would be. Oh, any man or... But I took it into the living room where he was reading to show it to him. Martin? Martin? Huh? Here's the chicken mango. You want to look at it? Don't interrupt me when I'm reading. I thought you might want to see it. Please, Myrtle. After you came in the kitchen and asked about it, I was so pleased. For heaven's sake. I really thought you were interested. Interested in something I was doing. Interested in me. But you weren't, were you? You were bored stiff. You were trying to act nice because you won't let me have the baby I want. Huh? You thought, let's kid the little idiot along. Let's make out like she means something. Give her a break. Let her feel important for a minute. I'm so bright. I'm so brilliant. I can afford to give her a minute or two of my time. Pretend that I'm interested. But you couldn't, could you? You couldn't even pretend. Not even for a minute. Not even for one lousy little minute. Myrtle. Hermes was right. Hermes gave me the answer. No, Myrtle. Don't be stupid, he said. 
If you hate it, get rid of it. What happened? I killed him, Charlie. Oh, no, you didn't. I brought that great big platter down on his head. And it broke all over him. And he fell down on the floor. And there was blood all over. All over the floor and all over his head. And some got on me, look, you see. And he didn't move and he wasn't breathing at all, and I didn't know what to do. Oh, no, no, wait, no, listen. So I came here. I wanted to ask Hermes what to do. I wanted to ask somebody. Somebody's got to tell no, me wait, now wait, what wait, to wait, do. Wait, 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 Now, hold it, hold it. Uh, uh, Dr. Haywood. Because, see, I don't know what to do next. Dr. Haywood. Yes, Charles. Uh, could you come here for a minute, Dr. Uh, Haywood, please? It's got to be somebody to tell me, somebody who knows what's the right thing to do now. What's the matter, Charlie? Uh, th- this lady here, uh, she's Mrs. Chapman. Chapman? Uh, Mrs. Myrtle Chapman. Oh, Mrs. Chapman, could you stop crying and tell me? I'm sorry. I'm so ashamed. I didn't mean for you to... She says she killed her husband. Mrs. Chapman, Myrtle. I killed him and I don't know what to do. Bring another drink, Charlie. She's had a lot. Bring her another one. Oh, oh, okay. You're the doctor. I guess somebody ought to call the police. Not right away. He's dead. I killed him. I don't think so. I hit him over the head with a big platter and he fell down and there was blood all over. But you over. didn't kill him. I did. No. Yes, I remember. I wanted to kill him. I was standing there with a the platter in my hand and I wanted to kill but him. But you didn't. You cut him up quite a lot, but you I did. meant to kill him. That's a long ways from killing him. Here's a drink, Doctor. Fine. Now... Drink this, Myrtle. Then I'm going to take you home. And when you get there, you'll see your husband's very much alive. How can you be so sure? I just am. Now drink up. Who are you? I'm Dr. Haywood. You're a doctor? I'm a therapist. As a matter of fact, I'm your husband's therapist. Well, I I didn't even know Martin had a therapist. Oh, yes. He's been coming to me for quite a while now. Actually, he called me on the phone right after you walked out and came here. I told him to go to the nearest emergency station and get his head sewn up. He may be back home by now. Finish your drink. I had enough. Then let's take you home. Okay. What did you say your name was? Dr. Haywood. Karen Haywood. Did you say... Karen? Yes. Come on. Let's get you home. If you're complaining about the long arm of coincidence in our story, stop and think how large a part coincidence has played in your life. Had you gone to another place than the one you went to for your vacation, would things be precisely as they are now? Had you chosen the profession you really wanted instead of the one you settled for, would you be happier now or less so? It's impossible to tell, of course, but you might, you just might find the answer by whispering in the ear of Hermes. I'll be back shortly. I hope you haven't found the Oracle of Hermes a foolish, frivolous thing, because it is not. It is very profound. What it says to us is that we do not need answers to our questions from the gods or anyone we think to be superior. That starting any place at all, we need only follow our own thoughts to arrive at the answer to our question. But the question must be serious, and we must have a serious reason for asking. Our cast included Terry Keene, Charles Irving, Ralph Bell, and Morlene Rouse. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Lou isn't going to change because of the trial. He's an insanely jealous man, and he might very well do the same thing again. You're awful. 
I thought you were so nice, Mr. Murray, but you're terrible. I had to let you know how things are with Lou. He got away with murder, and that makes me sick to my stomach. There's not much I can do about it, but maybe you can do something, Mrs. Rydell. Me? You can be careful. Do you understand? No. You've got to make sure he never has any reason to be jealous. Listen, if you think I play around... Even if he misunderstands your behavior, somebody else might get loose hands around his throat. It might even be easier for him the next time. He got away with it once. Please, Mrs. Rydell, for his sake. All right, for mine. Don't make your husband kill again. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. How aware are you of Denver's air pollution problem? Denver has the highest number of motor vehicles per person in the nation. Cars at high altitude emit twice as much carbon monoxide as at sea level. Carbon monoxide levels exceeded federal standards in the Denver area on more than 100 days in 1976. The Pollutant Standards Index rated Denver's air as good for only eight mornings and no afternoons during June, July, and August of 1977. Do you contribute to making Denver the second most polluted city in the nation? You've probably heard it before. Stopping air pollution is up to you. One person can make a difference, a decisive difference, when that one person is joined by thousands of others. If you're part of the problem, be a part of the solution. Find out what you can do. Call the Clean Air Coalition at 320-4747. A message of this station and NEHA, the National Environmental Health Association. This is the voice of the Rocky Mountain West. Radio 85, KOA Denver. CBS News. Your home is more than the sum of its parts, and creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.